Okay, well, I've got to go through ORP because I've had a few questions on ORP this week. <coughs> what is it? Etc. So ORP stands for oxidation reduction potential. So the chemical reaction in the water, who's done cool chemistry at school? Any chemical formulas? Okay, so normally a chemical formula you have uh, X plus Y chemical equals uh, Z plus you know A plus B plus etc etc. So the reaction that happens with chlorine is an you've heard it's called an oxidizer. Chlorine's an oxidizer, a ruster basically. Rust is oxidization. So that's the oxidation side. And then that's the reduction side. Yeah. So that's what it is. We always talk about chlorine here, but the actual chemical reaction is both oxidation and reduction. Chlorine operates chlorine plus bugs or whatever equals blah blah blah. Okay, so that's the that's the OR. P is the potential, so that's like the killing power of the water. So there's a, that's measured in millivolts, which is where the, the reading on the front of the screen is 705. It's not 7.05, it's 705 millivolts. Now that oxidation reduction value... Welcome, you're on candid camera, Martha. Um, that millivolt reading is affected by a few different parameters so it's a very flexible thing so of course it follows that uh, ppm chlorine is a big factor if you have no chlorine in the water you don't have a lot of killing power in the water um, as we've said before about pH pH is another big factor pH dictates whether you're having hockles or ockles. So that's the one that has is is the well-trained army that's out there killing things, and that's the Swiss that love everybody and don't really do much. Okay? And funnily enough pH means hydrogen potential hydrogen potential and that's a hydrogen ion or hydrogen atom there so the as pH goes up you've got less hydrogen in the water hydrogen ions in the water which means there's less available to marry up with that so there's less killing power in the water does that make sense? so uh, with regards to that, remember, on, on our test stations we've got those, what the pH is and what the effective chlorine percentage is. So at a pH of 8.6, so our, our readers read up to 8.6 but not above. At a pH of 8.6, 8.6 equals only about 3% of of the chlorine in the water is actually the hockles. The rest of it is all hockles, which is doing nothing. Yeah. So that's a really good way of demonstrating to the customers that, hey, yes, you know, your reading today is 10 ppm, but because you've got a pH of 8.6 and above, I know that only maybe that actually reads 0.3 ppm. And when I'm talking to customers in the shop about that, you know, you see their eyes widen up and they go, oh, I know 0.3 is bad. So that's why, you know, sir, madam, I recommend that you always do your little weekly dose of acid to make sure you're keeping your pH in check to make sure that you're maintaining 7.5, which is more like 50%. Uh, 
H O C L. Okay. Now the other thing that is that affects your ORP is stabilizer. So the more stabilizer you have in the water, the lower your millivolts go down because the way stabilizer works is it makes very weak bonds with the hockles. So it makes a weak bond that might last a fraction of a second and then it lets go and then it'll make another bond. And that's that's there because an an unprotected uh, chlorine in the in the top surface of the water gets hit by UV light and turns into gas momentarily and the stuff that's at the very top of the pool then is allowed to escape into the atmosphere so if there's no stabilizer in the water you're essentially going through um, nearly a whole drum of chlorine in a, in a day because it's just unprotected it's just gassing off into the atmosphere when you have too much stabilizer all the little poor chlorine molecules are being uh, surrounded by stabilizer and basically it's getting bonded to all the time the, minute, the second it loses a bond with one stabilizer molecule it's attacked by another one while it's being attacked by a stabilizer molecule and held in place it's not available to actually oxidize anything so yes it's protected by sunshine but it's not actually oxidizing and killing anything as well so that's where this thing of chlorine lock comes from when you get stabilizer levels very very high your your millivolts the ORP of the pool is so low that um, the pool can have some problems because it's not getting enough actual oxidization that makes sense with all the chlorines we got on the shelf there but you know, a lot of them contain that ceneric acid in them, yeah right? so by dosing it and all the time you just that level is going to increase yep. up to the point where I've had tests come in here and yep. they've skyrocketed right and, and it won't give me a level. Yeah. So what, what's the best thing best thing to tell customers? What change change it up. <coughs> so don't keep adding using stabilized chlorine, change to a non stabilized chlorine, either liquid chlorine or cal or cal hypo. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you're manually dosing a pool, mm -hmm. you should be doing tests often and changing the type of chlorine you're adding based on your calcium readings and your and your um, stabilizer readings so if you've got enough stabilizer in there and enough calcium you might be on liquid chlorine for six months but that's the best thing to do that's the best thing to do so people who, who have just a chlorine only the pool they should mix it that's what you're telling me you're yeah change it up go through a bucket of stabilized chlorine change to a couple of buckets of cal hypo and then change to three four months of liquid chlorine, chlorine. And you do that based on your testing to make sure those other things aren't getting too much because too much calcium from cal hypo can be just as big a problem particularly to the surface of the pool yeah. so with stabilizer another thing you might not be aware of 25 ppm stabilizer is equal to 90 percent protection of your chlorine so the minimum we look at is 30 which is I think 95 percent and then 30 to 70 70 is the maximum that's still only getting you up to 98 percent protection but then even up around 70 you're getting a big difference in in your millivolts reading so if you're getting your stabilizer up to 70 percent and you've got a roller chem pool it's going to be maintaining six seven parts per million chlorine because that's what it needs to hit its millivolt reading so when when you're looking at that you've got to look at these other two what's the ph and what's the stabilizer because yes you might have seven parts per million chlorine if you've got 70 parts stabilizer you still want to have around 700 millivolts to make sure the killing power in the water is what it needs to be you don't want to say oh well, 7 ppm that's cool I'll turn the millivolts down to 600 to get that down to 2 when you've got 70 parts stabilizer 
Okay. The way stabiliser works, yeah, the way stabiliser works, another way of thinking of it that Vendart explained was, you know, imagine you've got two countries at war, on one side is the chlorine and on the other side, and they're divided by mountain range, on one side is the chlorine, the other side is the nasties, and the mountain range is stabiliser. The more stabilise you have in there, the actual accessible areas between the big mountains are little channels. So you can only get one little soldier through there at a time to attack the other army. So if you've got 100 parts per million, you know, it's one little soldier going in there by himself against all those nasties on the other side. If you've got 25 parts per million, then you've got fairly big wide valleys where you can push a whole lot of soldiers, tanks, everything else through to attack uh, attack the nasties on the other side. That's another good way of thinking about stabiliser. But what, as I say, we should be looking at around about 35 ppm I'd say for our regular customers because we're back there every 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 month at least, maintain 35 and then when you come to dose if it gets down to 25 you know, 500 grams or something like that in to try and keep that stabiliser level at the lower end of the range. 